Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for being here today. When we ended our regular COVID briefings, I said I'd like to have press conferences where reporters from around the state could continue to call in when possible. It's been a couple of months since the last one, so I thought we should have one more before the end of the year. We don't have a set topic for today, but we have almost the entire cabinet on the call. I want to give you the opportunity to ask any questions you may have. Before that, I just want to share a few thoughts. First of all, a few minutes ago, Senator Leahy delivered his farewell address to the United States Senate. I know many Vermonters, including myself, are there today in spirit with the Senator, expressing our appreciation for all he's done for our state over the last almost 50 years. The one silver lining we have is that we'll get to see more of him and Marcel back here in Vermont in the future. Next, tonight at five o'clock, I'll join Jewish community leaders for the annual State House Menorah Lighting Ceremony. It's open to all who want to attend, followed by light refreshments and other activities inside the State House, and we hope to see you all there. Lastly, in my remarks at the annual tree lighting, I recognize uh, several Vermonters who earned Rays of Kindness awards this year. People like Zach Kavakis from Stockbridge, who received a Ray of Kindness last year after he raised money to buy gifts for over 20 families during the holidays, and then went out and delivered them to families himself. Or Patrick Richardson, a student at Essex High School, who raises money for charities like Josh's House and the Humane Society in his free time. Or Amy Anderson from Waterbury, who helps connect and support foster families. The holiday season is a reminder that there is still a lot of good out there, even when times can look a bit bleak. It's also a reminder of just how far a simple, everyday act of kindness can go. If you know someone you'd like to see recognized for their kindness or service to the community, you can go to our website, governor.vermont.gov, to submit a nominee. And as you pause to spend time with family and friends over the next couple of weeks, let's all try to be a little more understanding of one another and offer a helping hand to those in need. It might seem small, but you never know how much a little kindness can impact someone else. So I want to wish all Vermonters a wonderful uh, Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and a very happy and healthy New Year. So with that, we'll open up to questions you may have for me, and maybe preferably to the Cabinet. We'll start with folks in the room before we go to the phones. Um, it seems like every day the new jurisdiction is banning the use of TikTok on state-owned devices. You haven't had that conversation? Yeah, I mean, we're having some of those uh, conversations internal. Um, and we're waiting for a little bit of guidance from the federal government as well as to what this means. I personally don't know what else is out there, what other platforms uh, that might be uh, leave you vulnerable uh, to the same type of thing. I know TikTok is, uh, is uh, topical at this point, but there are probably many other uh, platforms that gather a lot of information which can be sold uh, as well uh, to uh, some of our competitors and uh, enemies uh, across the globe. So uh, again, I think we all have to be very careful of what we do uh, in protecting ourselves, and we are weighing that out whether we ban it or not. But I'm not sure we could ban it from, uh, in terms of using, utilizing it uh, with state uh, devices. Uh, but, uh, but I don't know how much further that could go. But we are, we are considering it. Governor, the uh, legislature uh, is taking off in a few weeks. As you may have seen, there's a coalition of housing developers calling on uh, an investment in housing to the tune of $175 million. Um, is this something that, that you'd support? Well, we're doing that, actually, right now. I mean, we put hundreds of millions of dollars in, and we haven't spent all that money yet. So I think we're, we're obviously on the same page, same trajectory. We know we need more housing, um, be interested in what they have to say. Uh, but, uh, but again, uh, most of the money that we've, 
we put towards this effort has gone to uh, the VHCBs of the world, Vermont Housing Trust and others. Um, so again, I think we recognize the need and we put money in, into that uh, initiative. They, they argue that there's going to be a cliff um, after that money is expended, at which point Vermont has no more money to build new affordable housing, um, but the need will remain in place. And they say in order to avoid falling off that cliff, you have to make another substantial investment, yeah. in their opinion, $175 million. You, obviously, you're not going to figure out the number right now. But do you agree in concept that the state of Vermont needs to make another, you know, enormous by, by historical standards s slug of, of money into housing? Again, I think we'll have to, we'll have to see, right? I, I mean, I think we'll need, continue to need more housing. I would agree there. Um, but how much we'll need, I'm not sure. Uh, we're still, you know, seeing uh, the positive effects of the $37 million that leveraged a lot of other private uh, assets uh, in that initial um, housing initiative that we uh, we put into place uh, four or five years ago. So we're still seeing the benefits of that. Um, we're still having uh, uh, ribbon cuttings on some of those projects. So we'll be, we'll be utilizing this over the next few years. The other approach uh, might be uh, for the legislature to consider how do we make it less expensive to build this housing so that uh, private uh, companies uh, can uh, get into something that's lucrative for them and, uh, and, and gives us uh, what we need as well as a society. So before we did the $37 million, uh, which we thought was incredibly, um, it was a large investment at that point, as you might remember. $37 million was a lot of money uh, back about four or five years ago. Today it doesn't seem as great when we're talking about the billions of dollars we're receiving um, and the hundreds of millions we put into housing since then. But the point is, we never did this before um, to, that, to that magnitude. Um, so there was a way to provide for, uh, for affordable housing, decent affordable housing, uh, before the government got involved and had to, to utilize uh, money to jumpstart that. So we need to reflect on what are the cost drivers? What can we do to make it less expensive to build decent affordable housing in Vermont? And if there's zoning changes we need to make, uh, regulation changes, Act 250, whatever it is, then we should consider that because we could be helping ourselves and, and the economy. Have you and your team had any conversations with Senator Ron Hinsdale and Representative Bongarts about the bill they're working on? And Representative Bongarts, uh, we have, and uh, and he's moving uh, on the right track, and um, and we look forward. We're working with him. Yes, Governor. In the healthcare arena, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield this morning announced that they are not moving forward with the all-payer model next year. One care tells me uh, that's about 60,000 lives that will not be attributed to the, uh, the all-payer model. Um, your initial reaction to this news? Yeah, we just found out about it ourselves, or I just found out about it last night uh, or this morning. Um, I think it's unfortunate uh, that the negotiations uh, fell through. Uh, I'm going to be encouraging them, or we are going to be encouraging them to get back to the table and uh, try and see if we can uh, put into place something that works for everyone. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, anyone is at risk at this point in time. Um, but, uh, but again, we think that having Blue Cross Blue Shield and uh, One Care come together here is important. And we'll be, uh, we'll be moving towards encouraging that. But I might ask, um, Secretary Samuelson, uh, if she'd like to comment on that. Governor, I think that that's, I don't have much additional to add. I think that we're, uh, again, going to continue to try to get the Cross of Shield and One Care to come together. And um, this doesn't jeopardize our, our all payer model. I think that we're, we're confident in, in the way that it's moving um, forward. But this does give us an opportunity to continue um, our conversations about how we can. Uh, can continue to move forward and improve. So again, as the governor said, we're optimistic and, and hope that Blue Cross Blue Shield and One Care can come together. Governor, do you think 
there's more that the administration could be doing to promote the, the all-payer model and healthcare reform. Some critics have said that uh, you you have not taken a active role in trying to get providers to sign on. Um, and they said that maybe if you uh, were yeah, able I mean, to move along. Faster. We had we had this little pandemic uh, that we've been focusing on over the last uh, two or three years, and that has slowed progress. Uh, but we look forward to getting back uh, to try and do whatever we can, do our part uh, to encourage more providers uh, to get involved and to make this work uh, as seamlessly as possible. So we still think that this is a, uh, this is a worthwhile cause, uh, but we'll, um, we'll do our part. Uh, to, and we need everyone to do their part. We need the legislature to get involved as well. We need the Green Mountain Care Board. Uh, we need the hospitals. Uh, we need the, the insurance companies. All of us need to uh, pull in the same direction to make this happen. Governor, on the subject of health care insurance, you did not join the other 25 governors, including Chris Sununu and Charlie Baker, in calling for an end to the federal public health emergency. Uh, do you see a, a benefit, perhaps a uh, health care insurance benefit, in continuing that? Yeah, I, uh, I received that somewhat late. Um, and uh, needed to make a decision on the same day that I received it, uh, which was last Friday, I believe. So I, um, I don't disagree with them. I think the public health emergency should end. Um, but I, as I've tried to, to, uh, to do myself, um, I think it, it would be much more powerful if it was a bipartisan effort, I believe, that coming from maybe the uh, National Governors Association uh, would make it, uh, again, a much more feasible and, uh, and much more powerful when you're going to the administration. So uh, I would have preferred uh, that uh, we try and work together, um, again, uh, governors from the other side of the aisle and join, because I'm sure that there are some who feel the same way. And um, so I would have signed on to something like that, but uh, at that, um, Late date. I did, didn't didn't disagree uh, with their initiative, but felt we need to practice what we preach. Uh, if passed as prologue, we're going to be hearing a lot from you about workforce in your inaugural and your budget address. I'm wondering if you um, have developed any new strategies you're going to be asking the legislature to get on board with that you or Deputy Commissioner Degree can tell us about today. Uh, not today. But we'll be back on the 5th here in the building uh, to talk about uh, the state of the state and uh, the inaugural address. Uh, and then the budget will be coming a couple weeks later. So everything we have will be, um, we'll be forecasting at that point. Um, I will say that there are no real surprises here. Um, some of the same challenges uh, that we've been facing over the last uh, four or five years, we, we've been making progress on. We just need to make sure that we don't move to something else that we know is working. Again, uh, we need to, uh, to perfect it. We need to, to work on it. Uh, again, pulling in the same direction. I think the legislature has uh, come to better understand uh, the workforce challenges we have that they didn't fully appreciate when I first came into office, but I think uh, over the last couple of years have, uh, have understood it and their constituents for my constituents uh, have made that loud and clear. We need more workers uh, here in the state. And so uh, we need housing to do that. We need water, sewer, and stormwater infrastructure. We need broadband. We need all of those things uh, to, to keep and attract more people into the state. Some people are still without power today, and we're looking into another storm here in the week. What do you say to those people still without power and went three days without it in the winter and could be looking to another power outage. Yeah, first of all, I want to, we had a tremendous amount of people without power initially, and I want to uh, commend all those uh, line workers who were still working around the clock, uh, Greenmont Power, Washington Electric Co-op, and others um, who, uh, who, and our Canadian friends for coming down to support us uh, without them. There'd be a lot more without power. I think there's about just under a thousand at this point, and they're gaining every single day. Uh, so we'll get there. Um, but this was um, somewhat of a, a
dangerous storm uh, last week uh, with the heavy snowfall and a lot of it, uh, and, and just the, the density of the snow and, and how, uh, how uh, weighted it was in terms of uh, some of the trees and limbs and so forth that took out the power. I am watching this storm. We're watching this storm uh, this weekend. I'm, uh, I'm a bit concerned about what that uh, could mean. Um, with the predicted 50 mile an hour plus winds, um, a lot of rain, and then a lot of uh, freezing afterwards. So we are um, watching that uh, with great interest and we're preparing ourselves, we're prepared at this point, but, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but, um, but it's not, not great timing in some respects, but we'll, uh, we'll do our part. What's your message to Vermonters, given that we're ending this year with so much anti-Semitism that we've faced lately? Yeah, I think that's why it's important if, um, if you are in the area and could come and you don't have to be Jewish uh, to go to the ceremony and to light the menorah. I think uh, we all need to do our part to come together because we're all Vermonters, we're all Americans. Uh, and we need to uh, treat each other better. So I, I think it's just, uh, again, more about kindness and acceptance and, and maybe just experiencing uh, some of that yourself and coming to some of these events and supporting your neighbors, I think is, uh, is really important. In November, the um, state recorded $329,000 in cannabis excise tax. Um, what is your, your assessment of, of the revenue so far, and more so just broadly, how do you think the cannabis market is uh, rolling out? I think if you, uh, if you remember, um, th this was one of the areas where I said you shouldn't count on the money. Um, this is not going to be substantial, and uh, for those who are counting on this uh, to be the answer uh, to some of our budgetary concerns, I, I thought that that wasn't, uh, well, that wasn't the, the best uh, initiative to follow. So I'm not surprised uh, that it's down. Uh, I think there are a number of people who, um, who will still use uh, the, use cannabis, um, but don't want to pay taxes on it. So we'll see. I mean, got to give it time. And uh, they just opened up some of the retail shops so it's, it's probably too early to tell, but we shouldn't count on the revenue uh, in any great, uh, uh, to a great extent, I don't believe. Do you or anybody from your cabin have any advice for parents on how to talk with their kids about cannabis? We've got these stores opening yeah. up in many towns. Public opinion has shifted. What, what in, well, again, I mean, I would, too bad that Dr. Levine isn't on today, um, and I would look for someone else, maybe to maybe Jenny can um, can describe what we're doing on our side, or Secretary French. Um, but this is part of the charge of the the cannabis board as well. When we uh, chose those members, uh, I remember uh, talking with them individually about the, this was part of how why I signed on to it was to make sure that we protect our youth and that we had some educational programs that would, would help uh, make sure that we deter the use of, of cannabis until you're of age. So um, that is something that's probably a better question for the Cannabis Board, but the Department of Health uh, obviously has a message as well and either Secretary French or uh, Secretary Samuelson, would you have anything you'd like to add to that? Hi, Governor, Secretary French. Um, yeah, I would just say, uh, you know, I serve on the Substance Misuse Prevention Council along with Dr. Levine, and uh, this is definitely something the council has flagged as a concern, and we um, definitely want to ramp up our communication strategy as this, this program uh, comes online. Um, Secretary French, while you're there, a uh, new report raising some concerns about literacy among Vermont students. Uh, wondering if can get your thoughts about those findings um, and things you think the state needs to do differently in response. Well, 
Was that for me, Governor? Yes, it was. Uh, could you repeat the question? Was it literacy? Yeah, there's a, a new report. Uh, the I'm forgetting the name of the council, but I believe you're a member of it. Literacy. The literacy. Go ahead. Do you know what I'm talking? Do you know what I'm referencing? The report that just came out. Yes, uh, the literacy advisory council's report. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, you know, it raised some concerns about what's happening with. Uh, literacy among Vermont students and I'm wondering if you could just offer your reactions to the findings of that report and things the state might do differently in response to it. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. I appreciate you calling attention to it. Uh, you know, literacy, uh, our performance of literacy is concerning. Um, as a result of that, uh, we work with the General Assembly to uh, enact a policy on literacy. And one of the, the key strategies of that policy was to create this council. Uh, which has been doing uh, great work under the leadership of Gwen Camoli, who's the curriculum director up in Colchester. Uh, so the findings are, are, are not news, uh, essentially, uh, but we are, I think, building momentum across a variety of stakeholders, and certainly uh, that's been exceedingly useful uh, to school districts that they've been targeting uh, the recovery funds. Uh, so you know, the issues of literacy and the performance of students' literacy have been a perennial concern in the state. Um, our, our challenge has been how to leverage a lot of the COVID relief dollars to make an impact. So it's, it's nice to see the work uh, coming together and the report certainly highlights uh, a number of the concerns where we can work better. Um, but I think, you know, this is more of a uh, consistent articulation of the concern and strategies moving forward and um, it's not necessarily uh, new findings that were, were described in the report. Secretary Samuelson, did you want to add anything to the previous question? for us to point out that the Department of Health um, has a lot of resources for parents already on their website. So I would encourage individuals to uh, check out those resources. There's also funding going to prevention coalitions to address the, the cannabis uh, market um, and uh, to really um, help work through um, some of the use cannabis issues. Um, and right now, uh, the Department of Health is really ramping up that, that work as we move forward. So again, as a parent uh, myself, I would I definitely use the Department of Health's resources often and would encourage folks to, to check out their website, healthvermont.gov. All right, why don't we go to the phones now. We'll start with um, Tom Davis, Compass Vermont. Afternoon, Governor. Uh, just wondering if you have any uh, reaction to the announcement uh, and a warn notice from Global Foundries that it will lay off a total of 148 people in Essex Junction. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, my thoughts are with those who lost their positions uh, at Global Foundry. It seems to be the way of the world uh, in terms of supply chain and and the starts and stops uh, thereof. So. Uh, again, uh, my, uh, my thoughts are with them. Um, I'm disappointed, obviously, in any loss of, uh, uh, particularly uh, that number of positions lost in any one company or even overall. Um, the only um, bright spot, if there is one, is that we have a number of positions available throughout the state. And I'm sure that we can find uh, jobs for those who uh, wish to continue. Um, we, um, as a, anecdotally, I've had uh, an, a couple of people contact me uh, since uh, the announcement was made uh, and saying, uh, can you give us a list of, of who they are uh, and what their, you know, maybe a resume or, or just give me a name and, and uh, contact information uh, because we could use their help right now. So. I have no doubt uh, that we'll be able to to uh, to backfill uh, the the positions uh, if they're if they're willing. We have we have enough positions available. Thank you, Rob Taylor, local twenty two, local forty four. Uh, 
Rob, I see you there, but you're you're still muted. All right, we'll try Ed Barber, Newport Daily Express. Oh, there you go. What do you say? Yeah. Go ahead, Rob. New questions on this end. Okay. Thank you. Ed Barber, Newport Daily Express. All right, we'll try Tom Davis one more time. That's all we have on the phone, so. I have another question. Uh, Governor, uh, illegal entry in the Swanton sector of the U.S. Border Patrol is up about 700% in October and November. Given the possibility that Title 42 may be revoked despite the current stay issued by the Supreme Court, are you concerned about increased illegal entry into Vermont? And if so, will state law enforcement ramp up its cooperation with federal law enforcement? Um, I, I can say this, I'm always concerned about illegal entry uh, into the state, uh, but we have uh, law enforcement, border patrol, and so forth, and we have a great relationship with them, and we are in constant contact with them. Um, but I may ask uh, Commissioner Morrison to go further on this. She might uh, have more details. Thank you, Governor. Um, so I think I would echo what the Governor just said about our outstanding and, and uh, long-term relationship with our partners at the Border Patrol. Of course, we are concerned to hear data like this um, and we to to not be concerned about a similar level or an increased level, you know that that just isn't on, part of our lexicon. We are always concerned uh, when illegal activity is penetrating into the borders of Vermont. Uh, that being said, we are uh, awaiting a briefing from our partners at Border Patrol to uh, understand if there are ways we can increase our level of collaboration. Which, as I said, we we already have an outstanding level of collaboration between several. Uh, local county and state entities and our, our partners up on the northern border. As we got on the insights, Commissioner, as to the motivations or reasons for the increase? I have not. I do not have any direct knowledge of uh, the nature of the uh, incursions or the illegal crossings. Uh, generally speaking, if the there are high value targets or um, known criminal enterprises that are coming across the border, then we uh, would receive that intel and, uh, and and work collaboratively with our partners. So other than the numbers being high, I don't have any specific data points for you. You, you do expect an increased collaboration, though, with, with the feds? Uh, I think we have to hear more about the context of the numbers. Numbers by themselves, of course, are concerning, as the governor pointed out, but without uh, a little more meat on the bones, I'm hesitant to commit to what that uh, collaboration would look like. As you know, we, um, uh, we do not enforce civil uh, violations, civil uh, uh, illegal entry issues, uh, and we tend to want our federal partners to focus on uh, specifics to illegal immigration, but when it uh, penetrates the borders and there's further criminal activity, then of course we're going to lend a hand. So without without hearing the details, we need to, you know, get fully briefed up before we come up with a plan forward. I think Tom Davis uh, has signed on. Tom. Hello, Governor. Happy holidays. Thank you. You have a question, that was, Tom? That, that, was a great, that was a great gift. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> With that, unless anyone has anything else, it's always dangerous, but.